Cheers. That's a Mexican Cerveza, Cooper's actually Mexican Cerveza beer kit. And you can see I've got the lime in the bottom. You know, you squeeze the lime in there, of course it kills the foam. Glass looks a little frosted there. Kills the foam, but you're not worried about foam with this particular style of beer. You're worried about it being refreshing. And if you make the Cooper's Mexican Cerveza, or any Mexican Cerveza kit, or whether it's a kit or all grain or whatever, you really do need to have the lemon, the lime. Sorry, did I say lemon earlier? Lime. You got to have the lime in there because it, the beer is balanced a little bit sweet, it seems. And then when you put the lime in, it does the old sweet, it, it does, this, it, it counters it. It's wonderful. Cheers. Again, I got to take another one. How you doing guys? Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Got a couple things to cover this week. Don't mind the mess. I have just uh, a couple days ago I finished finally got my um, my Craig tube uh, or my what not uh, what do you call it? My SJ Pour uh, beer on the go here. So that's I'll get a shot of that in a little bit. What I've got going on back here. Um, but I got this is my wort chiller. Actually I wanted to talk a little bit about this because this is a killer chiller and this is from a website called jadedbrewing.com now you guys should take a look now there's been a little bit of talk recently in the 17 brew crew forum just you know i've heard a few things about people talking about um or maybe in some of the comments in my videos i can't remember about no chill brewing that's when you um you brew your i think it's when you brew your batch and then you don't chill it you let it cool down by itself I'm not a fan of it. I know some people have done it, and uh, maybe it works for them. Um, but I have this killer chiller here, and I'm happy to spend five minutes chilling my beer with this thing. Now, if I were you, I would invest in a good wort chiller like this one. And the construction on this thing is amazing. Um, you know, you can disconnect the, uh, the hoses if you need to. They're all, uh, they've got the, 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 the plumber's tape so they don't leak. You can take the plastic off and exchange the plastic if you like. And the plastic hoses are very stiff. They're rigid. They're not going to buckle on you when they get hot because the hot water that comes out of these things is pretty hot. And, you know, you've got this running to your sink, you know, and you're not going to have this happen. And I've had that before and it was frustrating. So, um, this particular one is made for the kitchen tap because it regulates the flow of water so you crank the tap up full blast cold water and then you this thing does its job it's got two uh, quarter inch um, copper uh, pipes that go all, around, go all around and then come back out and it does an absolutely phenomenal job so check out their website you know um, there's, a, there's also a lot of questions I've seen about you know, uh, sending the water through your wort chiller um, quickly versus slowly. Which one is the best to do? The truth of that matter is the tests have been done, and I even did my own test here. Sending the water through the chiller as fast as possible gives you the most efficient cooling of the wort. Now, there's people out there that don't believe that. Well, first of all, I did the test, and I proved that's true. Secondly, you know, you have to imagine if you're sending water into this thing, cold water in, and it's going through nice and real slow, it's going through the coils, it's picking up the heat from the hot wort, by the time it gets maybe three quarters of the way down, it's already the same temperature as the wort. So let's say your wort is like, you know, 95 degrees Celsius, okay, and you're cooling it down, and the water gets, goes down, it gets to about this far down, and it's picked up all the heat it can, 95 degrees Celsius. So from this point on, you're not getting any heat absorption, absorption 
out of the wort. It's just the water's already as hot as it can get and it's just waiting to come back out. If you send the water through quickly, then the water is going to be cooler inside the wort chiller because it doesn't have enough time to get up to the same temperature as the wort. So, sure, it might not get up to the full temperature of the wort by the time it's on its way out, but it's absorbing more heat from the wort. So that's kind of the answer to that conundrum that's going around on some forums and whatnot. The faster you send the water through the chiller, the better your heat absorption will be. Now, some chillers are made for hose uh, spigots, which send the water out really, really fast. And some, like this one, specially designed for kitchen taps. And this one totally works absolutely amazing. So check out their website. Um, I, I, I want to promote because I think it's an absolutely amazing idea. They custom design them and they'll even make uh, a certain shape if your pot has a, um, a spigot, like if your pot has um, you know, a tap here or something. This is a small pot, but you know what I mean. They'll, they'll make it for you so that there's a, like a bend in the hose in the pipe to make an allowance for that. So just keep that in mind. So, wort chiller, I think they're important. I know there's other different counterflow ones and other ones that you can run the beer through and all this kind of stuff, but just imagine the time it takes to clean those uh, and sanitize them before you have to use them. This one, I just put it in hot water when I'm done and it's gonna get boiled in the next batch and sanitized anyway. <sighs> okay, I got something um, in the mail uh, last week and I wanna show it to you guys. I shot some video uh, earlier this week. Let's check it out. I wanted to give these guys a shout, a shout out, uh, American Brewmaster, uh, home brewing and winemaking supplies, um, because they sent me some stuff and man, wow, I'm pretty excited. So um, this is, uh, I'm doing this because I wanna get, I wanna get to this. I'm gonna start brewing some of this stuff up. I got lots, I got lots of stuff to brew. and I couldn't be happier. So let's just uh, let's take a look at, uh, the fellow's name is um, Andrew who's the manager, and uh, he sent me some, some cool stuff. Let's take a look. It's a box, it's uh, fairly heavy. Gotta be careful we don't show any addresses, you know me, I'm famous for that. <clears throat> so the first thing that he sent was this. This is a, uh, a cider kit, Mandro Jack's Craft Series. Uh, this is a mixed berry cider. And then everything you need is here, the, the concentrate, the instructions are on the back, and I believe there's a little hidden pouch in the front here when you open it with the yeast and more detailed instructions. I can't wait to do that. That's really cool. Wow. So then he also sent um, the dextrose that has to go in with that. And I'm going to be making a video, basically, of making this, although it's so dead easy. You could probably do it with both hands <clears throat> tied behind your back. He sent me a bunch of hops. I haven't opened these packages yet, and I'm not gonna do it right now, but so I can't see everything that's in here, but I can see that there's some, uh, some citra. This is called experimental orange peel. No, grapefruit, sorry, experimental grapefruit. And there's some also some dried leaf hops in there, so cool, awesome. I can't wait to see what's there. So then he also sent um, a bunch of uh, yeast as well. I can tell there's some Nottingham, and is there Nottingham? No, there's um, Windsor. I can see the colors. There's US 04, US 05, and a few others in there. So more yeast than I can shake a hydrometer at. <laughs> so I'll put those in the fridge as soon as I'm done this. Um, and he also sent me a, a ingredients beer kit to make a, what is it, a Belgian wit beer. So here's the ingredients he sent me, and I'll probably throw together a little video for this too. Whoops, a little imbalance of weight here. This is a, a, some the steeping grains. I actually don't know what these are. They look like flaked, flaked something. Flaked barley. Um, uh, I don't know, but they're flaked. You can sort of see them. Um, it doesn't say what they are, but I don't really care. I, I can find out if I wanted to. So there's those, they get steeped. There's a grain bag in there and there's a little package. This is a, uh, a uh, bitter orange peel, little spice pack that goes in. And I think that's the yeast there. So, and along with those, we have a bunch of Pilsner malt extract. And we have some 
wheat malt extract. Nice easy extract beer, that's pretty cool. And of course there's the hops that go into the to that particular beer kit. So I'm really thrilled. Thank you very, very much to these guys. They're a new homebrew store. They do have a website, uh, www.americanbrewmaster.com. Uh, I went there, it looks to me like they carry just about everything from, from brewing ingredients to hardware to kegging stuff, everything. So do give them a do give them a, a ring or do uh, if you live in the I don't know exactly it's I think it's nor um, I think it's um, North Carolina I believe they're from uh, I don't know all of my U S codes for the country for the uh, different uh, states unfortunately because I live in Canada but uh, it's uh, yeah NC's North Carolina so um, that's where they're located but they probably ship too so if you wouldn't mind you know it's because of them it's because of uh, Andrew is his name that we're actually going to be having a couple more brewing videos on this channel so um, anything that you can do if you want to order something from them please do and uh, I'm not they didn't ask me to advertise for them but I'm doing it because I appreciate all the stuff they they sent me um, I really do and I'm having a lot of fun with this in fact after I shoot this video I'm gonna get on and brew some stuff okay thanks guys and uh, we'll hand it back to you Craig uh, okay, well, so you guys have all seen this. This is going to be the uh, me trying to bottle uh, out of the keg with my little contraption, which I'll show you in a minute. You saw it last week if you watched. So we're going to disconnect the, uh, the gas. I have not done this yet. Okay, and then I have to come over here just a second, and I have to turn off the gas. Uh, there, it's all the way down. Now we'll put this back on, okay, and then I got to go back over here, and again, you're not going to see anything for a second, and uh, turn up my regulator just until the needle moves, there, because I generally serve at a pretty low pressure anyways, and I don't know why, when I serve it, like some people are talking like 10 pounds serving. When I serve at 10 pounds, it comes out like a shotgun. So, and that's with both of my regulators. So it's quite possible. It's, maybe it's my hoses or something, I don't know. Anyway, whoops, I need to connect up the, uh, the beer line. There, I'm gonna clean up inside of that thing one day. You know how these things get, the bottoms of these kegerators get keyser. Which, what is it? I don't, I don't have taps on it, so I don't think I have the right to call it a kegerator. Anyway, so the reason I, you know, I've, I talked about this last week. The reason I'm, go, I'm gone with this sort of design is because I don't have the... Uh, I don't have the, the rubber bung that fits over top of the bottling wand. And I don't have a bottling wand either, so I guess I could go out and get those. But this is um, this is something I'm just trying to do. So this goes all the way down, and that actually tightens on there. So it's the same sort of thing because this little bug is hollow, so it you know it seals. And now I've got my picnic tap, and uh, let me see if you guys can see all this here. Now let's see what happens. There we go. So it's going in and it's kind of stopped because there's pressure here so I'm gonna burp it whoop there we go a little bit more of a burp see it's working I'm actually able to, to bottle this under pressure and I'm just keeping the uh, it's taking a while though all right let's just let it continue to sort of hiss out. Well, I'm looking at the beer beer right now going in. It's almost full. We're going to get a spillage here, I know. It's there. And I didn't put a tray here, so... Okay. And I'm going to pull that out. And I'd be inclined to maybe top that up a little so that there's foam there. Right? And then, yeah, I'm making a hell of a mess here. And then cap this. 
like that. And there is a bottle of beer. So now we'll get a glass and we'll pour this, see how it, how it comes out. Okay, so obviously I just bottled it. I mean, I could put it in the fridge overnight and, and you know, see what happens. But, I mean, what's going to happen to it? Um, it's sealed. So, just as well, we've got it in there. Oop. This is a dry stout someone sent me. John Palmer recipe. Y yeast, or W slash yeast 1968. That's what was in this. So... <laughs> Maybe the guy who sent this to me is watching. Uh, so anyway, here's... We're not going to get a pop because there's really no pressure inside of here. Right? So... And we're getting a little bit of stuff there. So let's just give it a pour. Just as though... Somebody was pouring it for the... Now, there's no sediment in the bottle, which is nice, so I can tip it up and I didn't get the whole thing. And, um... It, it looks... It looks like it's kept its carbonation. Let me give it a whirl. Because, I mean, again, it's a Mexican cerveza. It's not going to have a lot of head retention. Plus, that's going to be gone anyways, because I'm going to put a lime in this in a minute. And it kills the head retention completely anyway, so... See what we got. It's got exactly the same carbonation it had in the keg. Okay. Now, will this work with the other beer that I'm going to brew for the for the SJ Pour Challenge? That remains to be seen. Um, it worked. You know, I mean, it's as good as anything really that's proven anyways that that little thing works and I'll put that in my parts drawer and there it is okay here we are back thank you for watching guys by the way I want to mention uh, my son David has a YouTube channel as well you're welcome to subscribe to it and check out his compositions when he does them and um, and he would appreciate that too right so what do we got here? Well, as you just saw, I got some stuff in the mail. Here's the, um, the cider I've got brewing over here. And it, uh, get in there. It came with these, this flavor, flavor pack and a sweetening thing. So we'll add those when the time comes. The sweetening thing's optional. Um, here I've got a Cooper's Real Ale brewing. Um, I, I switched out the yeast for some USO4, and they all have heat belts. These ones are kept at around 72. That's what they recommend. This one here is on a timer, so the timer switches the belt on and off. And this one, is, and so it keeps it a little cooler. And this one is actually my uh, Craig tube, uh, not my Craig tube, my uh, SJ Pour. The name's mixed up. SJ Pour uh, beer. Don't mind the wine spills, spillage on top because I was working with my wine. So that's my SJ Pour beer, and it smells. It smells really nice. I can smell the the hops in there. Beautiful stuff. All right, and over here I just got some wine. This wine is a I forget what forget the. Um, I don't think I have the box. Shoot. Uh, uh oh. I don't know, because that's that's not good because I like this one. But anyway, it's got the wood chips in it, so it's got the oak flavor. And you know what the interesting thing is, is that uh, just before we started filming this segment, I noticed that there was no airlock on this. <laughs> Last night I took a sample and I siphoned it into this carboy. I took a sample and I forgot to replace the airlock. So it's been sitting here for 24 hours with no with nothing covering that. However, it does have the potassium metabisulfite added to it now, so it's preserved, and when I take a smell, absolutely nothing wrong with it. So, bad on my part. I'll just put that on for now while I get an airlock. I don't know what the hell happened to the one I had on there. Maybe it popped off. In fact, you know what? I think that's... 
what may have happened. You got to be careful because when you when you do a, uh, an airlock in star sand, um, it, it's it's slippery, you know. And uh, let's see if I've got one in here. This part's slippery. And you stick it in your fermenter, and this is being glass. Um, I've had them pop out and just fall down. Remember last night I got you to help me find a one, mm. and probably the same things happened today. So, but no worries. That is safe and sound, and I'll, I'll put a, an, air, an airlock on that in a few minutes after we're done shooting this, but I keep getting hit in the head with a spatula. Ah. Anyway. Okay, that's fine. Not a problem. That's it for this Homebrew Wednesday, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you on Friday on my live radio broadcast. Oh, well, radio, online radio broadcast. On vonlive.tv slash Craig Tube, and sometimes Daisy casts with me, right? She's a mess right now. She needs a bath. She doesn't like that word. <laughs> Don't get the floor. <laughs> we got uh, lots of junk down here. Gotta clean up. You know, once I get some of these things packaged, I have an all grain batch to do that was sent. I have a pumpkin beer that was sent, and I have a wit beer, as you saw, that was also sent that I'll be doing. And I'll be shooting a little bit of video of those being made as well. So there's Craig Tube brewing videos coming up, and that's a good thing. All right. Thanks for watching. Be safe. Hope to see you Friday. We'll see you soon back here on YouTube. Take care. 17.